This is a video tutorial for geocoding with QGIS. And in this process, we're developing XY coordinates for particular addresses. To get your API key, which is one of the conditions that we need to meet, let's just do a quick search for Google Maps API key. And for the get API keys, let's just click on that. There'll be a point where you can click on get a key. I'm not going to actually do that right now because I've already done that, but you need to have one of these keys. And the key is just a simple um, text expression of the key itself. And once you get that into a saved text document, you can just copy that into the console when we actually start the geocode. But you'll need this if you're using Google Maps as your geocode engine. All right, to get started here, let's just preview the folder uh, for this particular lab. So to do that, I have a folder called data. And under data, I have downloaded US cities population. This particular CSV, if I open it up, let's just preview it real quickly together. It just has a column for city, it has a column for state, and then it has a column for 2014 population estimate, 2010 census. So we're showing the difference between 2014 to 2010. And we're looking at the percentage change. And we have a rank column here for one, two, and zero um, relative to how much population gain or loss took place in that particular city. What we don't have is that we don't have a XY coordinate and we don't actually have a points feature that represents these particular locations. All we have is tabular data. And oftentimes this is the case where all you have is tabular data and you have some address locator information. So the best case scenario would be that you have a nice address formed, a city and a state, and maybe even a country. Um, that's going to give you a relatively high precision geocode. In this case, we're doing a low precision geocode where we're just trying to get the point within these particular cities. So again, low precision geocode is what we're doing in this particular video tutorial. For context, I have census urban areas and I also have census state. So if we go back to our QGIS project, which I've saved, I've called it geocode. If I open that up, um, I currently have loaded in those two features. So let's go back to um, our particular project that I've started here. And here you can see in the light green color, the actual urban area polygon sitting on top of the states. So there's the states. And we're gonna expect our geocode points since they're big cities and they've gained or lost population, that they're gonna be around these urban centers. So the pattern of our points should kind of follow along with these urban areas is what we would expect. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, the first thing we need to do before we get much farther is actually install a plugin. So the notion of a plugin is, is that it's an extension of the main software package and developers create plugins to add functionality to QGIS. So if we install this plugin, manage and install plugins, in here I just need to search for the plugin that I want. So I'm looking at my current installs right now so you can see I'm on the install tab. And if I go to all and search mm Q, G, Q, G, I, S. It's going to see it. I click on it. It's going to give me a preview of the actual plugin, what it does. You can see that it's been downloaded many times. It's a very popular plugin. And we'll install the plugin. Take a moment for it to install. And then I'll close this. And then we can see on a top um, toolbar or menu bar up at the very top, um, I actually have the icon for it or at least the text expression of it. I can go ahead and click on that, and that's gonna let me into the actual geocode here. And we can see it's the fourth one down on the bottom. So let's go ahead and open that up at this point. So we're gonna create a geocode. We're gonna be doing it with Google Maps API. Remember, I have my Google Maps API key already that I've accessed and have downloaded as a little text document. So go to this. And here, I need to set this up correctly so that it runs. I'm going to go input the CSV file, which is your address data. In this case, if we go to data, we're going to go to US Cities Pop. It's not seeing an address field because we don't have 123 Ash Street. We don't actually have the address field in our data. But what we do have is we have state and we also have city. So it's recognizing those two. You can point this to 
whatever column is your address data. So maybe you have the address data for some odd reason termed Apple in the column header, you would point it to Apple for the address field. So it's recognizing what it assumes to be city as city and what it assumes to be the state field as state. It sees that. So that's fine. We go ahead and accept those defaults. Our services, we can use OpenStreetMap or we can use Google Maps. In this case, we're going to use Google Maps. And again, we're going to be placing our key here. So we do a copy paste for the key. I'm not going to actually do that right now. I'm just going to, um, for the web purposes here, I'm not going to show my key, but I'm going to put it in in just a moment after I finish up setting up the dialog. So the output shape file here is I want to make sure that it's going to the correct place. I've made a folder called exports. So I want to send it to that folder. So I click on exports. I'm just going to call it US Cities Pop. That's fine. And save it. Also on the output list, these are for the not founds. If the geocoding service does not find a match, it's going to send it to a CSV called not found. We just need to point it to the right location. So under browse, I'm going to send that to exports also. And save it. Sometimes you'll get permissions denied if you're accepting defaults in terms of your file paths. So just make sure that you know where the things are going that you that you want to have exported out and make sure that you have privileges. So if you're a user on a machine, um, you just want to be making sure that your file paths are places that you can access. Otherwise, you'll oftentimes get permission denied. So I need to go ahead to run this. I need to put in my Google API key, which I'm going to do in a second, and I just click on OK. Once I click OK, we have 297 records. These 297 records that are sitting in the CSV, they just have a city and they have a state field. Those two fields are going to be compared to the Google Maps API. So it's going to go to the actual mapping engine that Google has, and it's going to compare city state in our file to what Google has for city state. And it's going to then acquire a latitude longitude, create a shapefile and deliver us an output shapefile down here called USCitiesPop.shp. So it's going to do that process. What it's not going to do is it's not going to give us latitude and longitude in the attribute table. And after we do the geocode, we'll add in that functionality together. So this will take probably about five, maybe 10 minutes, depending on your internet connection speed. Um, but I'm going to run it, I'm going to pause the video, and then I'll come back once the points are delivered to me. It probably should take about five or six minutes to do that process. And again, remember I'm pasting in my API key before I proceed further with OK. So this geocode took approximately five minutes, and it returned 297 of 297 original addresses, which is spot on, 100% perfect. And if I take a look at the attribute table, so if I open the attribute table, we can see that there's two columns that have been added, address type and address location. And this is telling us that the location is approximate and it's to the locality. So depending on the actual precision of the data that um, Google Maps API is able to generate for your points, you're going to get back different terminology here. What's important for us to understand for this particular geocode is that we started with low precision, which is at the city level. So we want to make sure that any X, Y coordinates that we're developing within the table from going forward here are low precision also. We don't want to assume that our points are very specific to a location within a city. They're just somewhere within the city itself. Okay, so let's actually symbolize this a little bit better also. So if we go to properties, we can make the point maybe a little bit uh, brighter so we can see a little bit better. That's good. So here's what we have. We can see that our clustering of our geocode is within these urban areas largely, and that's to be expected. So we can see we have a lot of points over here that um, probably have gained population out in California. And in our Rust Belt area, likely these particular locations have lost population. We're not going to actually symbolize these points to reflect the, the loss and gains of population that is in our attribute table. We could do that. Our focus here is just to work within the table itself to develop x, y going forward here. So what we have at this point, let's go ahead and save our project to update it, um, is we have the shape file back to us. What we can do also is develop our x, y coordinate, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. And the way to do this is to use the main toolbar here 
and we can open the attribute table with this icon. We can also open the field calculator, which is right next to it. And that's what we're going to do at this moment. So we're going to go ahead and open field calculator. And we're going to actually create an X column and a Y column and add in latitude and longitude. So to do that, we're going to create a new field. We're going to, let's work with X coordinates first. So we're going to call it X underscore C O O R D. It's going to be a decimal number. And under the decimal number, our precision is going to be low. So let's just have it be one decimal place. 10 output field length is fine. And we're going to use geometry as our function. So we click on the geometry area. This group contains functions that operate on geometry objects, idea, length, area. Okay, we're going to go down. And we just want to find x, the dollar, the dollar sign x. Here it is. This returns the x coordinate of the current feature. We double click on it. It comes into our expression window. That's all we need. We just want to calculate the x coordinate. And we say OK. Let's go take a look at our column. We'll see at the end now we have x coordinate, which is great. Let's do the same process for y. So we click on Open Field Calculator. We're going to create a new field. We're going to call it y coordinate. Same difference, decimal number. Precision is going to be low at 1. We're going to go to Geometry. We're going to add in our y. So it's dollar sign y. And we'll go ahead and double click it put it into the expression area and say OK. Go check our table. Got our Y coordinate. So we're all set up in terms of our attribute table is that we have actually created X, Y coordinates. So now if we want to use this outside of QGIS for mapping in the future, now we know that we have an X, Y coordinate that importantly represents the precision at the city state level. So it's relatively low precision, but that's fine for our purposes. That's what we're trying to achieve here on this particular map. We could use this map if we wanted to for a relatively small scale mapping. Um, we're not interested in the precision at the, you know, within the city. Um, we're interested in seeing it more globally across all states. And we can see at this scale, we also have this red Xing on top of our points. That means that we're in an editing session at this moment. And then what we need to do is we need to toggle the editing off. So to do that, we just do a right click and go to toggle editing, click on it and save our shape file because we've updated it we know that we've done what we wanted to do and we go ahead and save it save it and that toggles off great now if we take a look at our exports folder we can see that we just have a shape file and its components we could probably pick apart the dbf if we wanted to but there's an easier way to actually get a nice csv of the work that we just did so to do that we're going to use our mm QGIS plugin again. So I'm just going to dock this toolbar. I'm going to go up to MMQGIS, QGIS, and I'm going to go to Import Export. Instead of geocoding, we've already done our geocode. We're going to go into Import Export, Attribute Export to CSV file. And here we can select one particular column that we want to export, or we can do the whole table. So in this case, my source is my points feature. I need to send it to a location. So let's send it to Exports. And I'm going to call it um, city pop and xy for xy coordinates and say save. Say OK. And it gives us a little toggle bar at the top and it says I'm doing this right now. It's, it's showing you how many are being exported. Um, once it's done running, it should say in your lower left hand corner how many records were exported. That looks correct, 297. So let's go back and just make sure. So if we go into our exports folder, we should see, let's refresh this. I thought I put it in exports. Maybe I put it, oh, I must have put it outside of exports. It's sitting right here. I'm just going to drop it into exports. And let's open it up. Make sure that it looks right. So we've got city, state. We have the things that Google Maps API added in. And then we have our XY coordinates at the very end.